So, dudes, um, in a very strange turn of events, I've discovered that you guys actually like listening to me flap my trap about random sh which is kind of confusing and, and strange, but we'll do with that what we will. I, I've noticed a lot of hubbub around the siege scene talking about how the game isn't necessarily as popular as it used to be, and it's making it a little bit more difficult for YouTubers to do their job. So I thought I'd chime in and give my take on the situation in terms of where I've been and where I'm moving my channel moving forward, just in case any other uh, content creators in the scene uh, wanted to hear my thoughts on it. So basically the big push for, for Siege content, like there was, there was a huge kind of, kind of hubbub around the arrival of the game on the scene in late 2015, as you can see here. And then it was like, <laughs> kaboom. Right? Like, kind of back to where we are right now, right? Maybe just a little bit better. Copium. <laughs> and, you know, people were complaining in, th in this phase here. We were like, what the fuck happened? We got to do something. So then Ubisoft started putting a bunch of money into the esports component of the game. And the esports component really, really took off and really blew up. And that's where you kind of got this rise around 2017. So thank you, Pro League. A lot of advertisers go to these lands, put eyeballs at these large traffic events where there's a lot of impressions for Rainbow Six Siege, and it gets a pretty decent chunk of change, and it does promotional work for the content patches that are coming to the game, so that way more people know about them, more people get excited about content coming to the game, more people play it, more people in my space make more money. So all the people that make these weird conspiracy theories about how Pro League players are gathered in large circles and in dimly lit rooms with hoods over their heads, collaborating on how to make the game unfun. Yes, we will take away box frag grenades. Mm. That's not what's happening. A lot of the balance changes that the casual community finds annoying and unfun, the comp community also takes an issue with. Okay? The esports scene needs to be healthy for this game to thrive. It gets a lot out of attention being directed to these LAN events. So what was the Siege content scene like around 2017? Well, business was booming. Uh, my videos sucked. They had less editing. I was busy with school. I had less time to work on them. I don't, I don't know where people are coming from when they're like, oh, yeah, I, I, miss, I miss the old Gregor. I miss the old Kanye. He wrote more jokes in them. And sometimes I didn't even have jokes. Like the Buck How to, there was like one joke. I, I, I take more time writing jokes now than I did back then. This isn't what people think it is. The reality is just that we could get away with more as content creators than we were able to now because the game was just more popular. My mic sucks. I'm using a blue snowball that I got from working at a peach orchard. Uh, the, the mixing is bad. On the thing, but it still does the job. The gun does well at close medium ranges. The Russian Wait optics do just as well as the NATO Here's ones, my in my opinion. The game audio is too loud. It, the, the, v, the VO sounds like shit, and the game audio is too loud, so the mixing's bad, right? I'm just kind of running around, just shooting, going blah, 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 blah. There's like no editing. There's no graphics. I'm not explaining how the operator works in context with other operators. Bruh! You get three pieces and can detonate them remotely so you can blow up Bruh! in the, in the room at the same time if you so desire. Nobody cared, right? Nobody cared because the game was so freaking fun and it was such a novel concept that nobody was doing before. The traffic to this game was so big that I could give dog shit advice like this and people wouldn't even care or, or notice. As content creators, we, we have to think more strategically than we used to, okay? The... The traffic for the game alone can't bail us out of every situation. What what are people looking for? What topics, what information do people want to look for about Rainbow Six Siege? And a lot of, you know, the clip compilation era of YouTube, I don't, I don't think it's a thing anymore. I think the only way that you can do that is if you're like a really, really popular uh, player in the esports scene. And even then I've noticed a lot of those channels that just upload clips of them just like, Oh, I, I drop a 40 bomb in Valorant and I, I'm super cracked at gaming. Those, those don't do as well as they used to. 
The, the Shroud PUBG era is over. That's why I get so irritated with the whole, uh, screw Pro League, dude. Uh, catering to Pro League. Man, I'm able to do what I do because of Pro League. Every Seeds content creator. Okay, we benefit from the traffic that goes to the game at these tournaments. It's an ecosystem. And I can prove it to you because every three months, there's a huge influx of traffic to the game. Eyeballs get on the press release that's done at the tournament. And then there's a huge amount of players that come into the beginning of the season. Okay? It needs this constant refresh. It needs it. Siege needs that to survive. That's what happens when you don't do that. That's what happens with Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite comes out. It looks like it's going to kick everybody's ass. And then it gets no content. And then done. It's not 2008 anymore. You can't just put out a game and then just kind of, eh. And we'll put out a map pack. Okay, it's 2022. It's current year. So you notice there's kind of a rise around the beginning of each year because that's usually coinciding with the Siege Invitational, right? 2017, uh, January 2018, January 2019, there's another little peak. And COVID happened. And you had a lot more people gaming, even though there was a dip here around 2020 because they can't do anything except, you know, game, right? They can't go out. And then 2021 was where people were starting to kind of like go, okay, um, hello, what's going on? And, and this is why these roadmaps and this is why content reveals by Ubisoft, press releases that they put out are so freaking important because remember the roadmap we got for year six, right? We had Flores, reworked border which is a rank map, so fair. Okay, they can put it. They can potentially put it back in the competitive rotation, and then if it gets competitive play, then it's going to get played and ranked more. Uh, we had reworked Favela, which I don't know how many people were asking for that. It's, it was a pretty casual, kind of written-off sort of map that's like, okay, this is a novelty. The novelty of this map was that you could blow up a lot of stuff from the outside. We tried. It didn't work. Forget about it, right? But we're going to rework it. Okay. Um, then we got to, uh, Osa, no new maps, just a bunch of different map buffs. So this is already an SEO disaster, right? Because you can't really put new map in for search terms because there, there is no, there's no, there's not even a rework. You can't even put a rework in the search terms. You just say like coastline buff, uh, clubhouse buff. How, how's that going to, going to show up in the algorithm? It's not. And then we got Thorn. And reworked Outback, which was a map that a lot of people just universally hated anyway. So we had we had two maps that nobody liked, and then a map that people were kind of eh, like on the fence about. And, and and we transitioned from a model of releasing two operators in a given season, and no new weapons. Now Foreign did get a new weapon, but we don't add a new weapon to each operator. The reality is, uh, year six was not particularly groundbreaking. So when you have a whole year that's kind of that's kind of a write off it's going to have ramifications moving forward for the game's traffic later on these live service models this is all momentum based right when the ball gets rolling it stays rolling for a little while but you have to keep the inertia going you have to keep you have to give it energy and once it goes down to a stop you got to do a lot of work to get it going again siege is is charged like a traditional game that you buy at the store but it's really treated like a live service okay it's like every other multiplayer game on the market right now siege lives and breathes by content releases and and hype building up towards content releases and then when when that free month gap goes up you kind of have to pump new life back into it with with a new operator or some kind of map content of some kind and that's why people were really frustrated with the the fact that we haven't had a, a new dedicated map in a in a pretty significant amount of time, because a lot of content creators, especially, felt like you know we don't really have a lot of stuff to work with. And until the year seven roadmap got unveiled, we were all kind of like, oh boy, we we don't know what's going on. But we're a lot more hopeful than we used to be, right? Uh, we have TDM, huge huge addition, a new map, big addition as well. Uh, team team deathmatch map, you know, maybe it's not a competitive map, but it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out because I play a lot of TDM. I'm okay with that. We're finally getting a shooting range. Holy crap. We've been asking for a shooting range for so long. 
we're getting a, a huge rework to the ranked system. They're doing something with the with the reputation system so we don't have to deal with these weirdos as much in, in ranked. So the the actual player experience is gonna improve. We're getting permanent arcade modes. Crossplay is coming. There's a lot there's a lot of stuff in this to be excited about. But we are in a dip. I showed you that dip with the Google Trends. That's that's the reality of the situation. Okay. The game isn't in the state it was in in 2017 or 2018. So you gotta you gotta play smart. And Ubisoft has to play smart too. But ultimately, the game is the way it is. There's nothing else like it on the market. Siege has basically created its own genre of tactical shooter unto itself. There's no there's no competition at the moment. And in my opinion, you know, just based off of my personal experiences with with this job, my channel might be based around Siege, but people aren't here for Siege, if that makes any sense. It's got to be your channel, and it might be based on a particular topic, but it's your spin. It's your spin on that topic that people subscribe for. Is the game in, in the easy mode phase of YouTube where you could just get away with uploading a bunch of clips of you running around and fragging people like it was in 2017? No. And I used to think there were personal problems involved. I used to think there was something going on with the algorithm that was outside of my control, that I had entered into a new phase in my life and that reflected in my content in a negative way, or my community was was had gotten that pissed off about the Valorant switch for a year. And, and the reality is I, I came back to Siege after making Valorant content for a year and, and getting the worst paychecks I've ever had in my life. And then it immediately went like, like, boom. And that happened. My, my channel had one of the best months I've had in a long time. At the point where in the Google Trends thing, it's like at its lowest. And that's indicative of something to me. And I'm just going to ride it out. And that's all I can do. It's kind of a boomer saying, right? If I'd known back then what I know right now, right? Like things would be very different. I would have done things very differently. But that's life, right? You're kind of an idiot when you're 20 years old. As much as uh, some 20-year-olds hearing that wouldn't like to hear. But yeah, too long, didn't watch. I don't I don't give a crap about the, the Google trend line going down. I don't give a crap about, oh, the algorithm, the traffic isn't as high as it used to be. At the end of the day, I'm just going to keep making content that people want to watch. And, and that's all. that's all I'm going to keep doing. That's all I think I have to do. So, yeah. Uh, thanks for listening to me ramble about this crap. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Deuces.